2,000 years later, Christianity comes along. And our symbol is the fish. Then we have to see that there is a correlation that the Father is drawing for us through symbols that we must pay attention to. It's part of his picture. It's part of his picture to show you that you are of Abraham's seed. You Gentiles, you who were once afar off, as Ephesians 2 tells us, you who were once afar off are now being brought near into the commonwealth of Israel. We are Israelites. We are the descendants of Ephraim. We are Ephraimites. But I'm going to go one step further with you to show you in history how this plan was put into play and how it worked. And then I'm going to go another step further into the prophets and show you what the prophets say about who the Gentiles are. So as we leave as we leave Israel on his deathbed, as he gives all the blessings to his sons, he sets up another conflict that we are seeing today as he gives the blessings in Genesis 49. He goes on to tell his sons what is to become of them in the last days. Now when he says in the last days, this is what is going to be of you and your descendants, we have to understand that must mean that the twelve tribes are in existence in the last days. But, oops, Wait a minute, in Revelation, we see there are 12 tribes still in existence. And all 12 tribes are named as the 144,000. Now you're going to say, oh, but those are the Jews. Here's where we get into something that needs to be drastically changed in our thinking. There were 12 tribes of Israel all named after the patriarch of the tribe. There was Gad and Reuben and Dan and Naphtali. Reuben was the firstborn. Reuben should have gotten Jacob's blessing, the birthright. But Jacob gave Ephraim the firstborn blessing. And that was he would receive double the inheritance of Jacob's. However, what Jacob didn't do was he did not give the authority to Ephraim. He gave the blessing of authority to Judah. And he said that the scepter will not pass out of Judah. The ability to have authority over the family. So right there another tension has been set up by our Heavenly Father. The tension between Ephraim And Judah, Ephraim was given the inheritance of the property and the assets. Judah was given the authority of what to do with them. Now how would that be if you and your brother had to split the inheritance and you got all the money but he had the right to tell you how to spend it? Right there is a built in conflict. So we see the father's plan emerging all the way back from Ishmael and Isaac. The conflict was built in. And then coming down between Jacob and Esau, the conflict was built in. These two conflicts we see today in front of our very eyes, they're prophetical. And now we're looking at the conflict between Ephraim and Judah. And will you be surprised when I show you who those two peoples are? Back to Israel on his deathbed giving his final blessing to his children in Genesis 49 it confirms that these same tribes will be in existence in the last days please take note of that after Israel dies the twelve boys and their families the twelve tribes of Israel the twelve sons of Israel the Israelites stay in the land of Goshen in the land of Egypt for 400 years they become enslaved and at the point where it becomes so difficult and they are so burdened they cry out to God for deliverance 
And with that, God sends a deliverer, Moses. When Moses comes on the scene, it is about 1,500 years before Jesus. The Israelites have been in Egypt for about 400 years. And when Moses comes, he is told by God to go to the Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. And of course, we have the wonderful story of the Passover the ten plagues, and how Pharaoh is forced by our father to let the Israelites leave Egypt, which they did. And at the time they left, it is suggested that there were perhaps as many as two million Israelites that walked out of Egypt, along with a mixed multitude. The mixed multitude came from, most likely, the Hebrew slave women who were taken by Egyptian men and impregnated and the children that they had and those children grew up to have children. So the mixed multitude were still Hebrews had Abraham's seed in them but they left along with foreigners and went and followed Moses into the desert. Now we'll get back to the concept of the foreigner that the Bible refers to because it is the people who do not have Abraham's seed in their DNA but God still makes a way for foreigners to become part of the family of God and he makes a way through the law and the Torah where he says there are three conditions for a foreigner to become an Israelite. He must be circumcised, which circumcision was the sign of the covenant between Abraham and God. So the foreigner must be circumcised. He must partake of the Passover. And he must walk with the Israelites in the way that they walk. Those three conditions then made that foreigner acceptable as an Israelite. And that foreigner would become as an Israelite in the inheritance of Abraham's blessings. So as two million people, two million Israelites along with the mixed multitude and the foreigners left Egypt and followed Moses and went through their 40 years of wandering in the desert, the stories that we could read in Genesis all point to that the father was trying to get Egypt out of the Israelites and to put his thinking in their minds. For they had thought as slaves and now the father had to show them that they were free men. To do that, he gave them a covenant. He gave them a law. A law which he said, if you will abide by, I will be your husband and you will be in covenant with me forever. He brought the Israelites to Mount Moriah and he brought Moses up to the top of the mountain and gave him Ten Commandments. He wrote those commandments on tablets of stone with his own finger, the finger of God. And these were the words of the covenant, those Ten Commandments. And Moses brought them down the mount and gave them to the Israelites. And they said, what he says we will do. They agreed to the covenant. This was after many things that occurred The making of the golden calf, the smashing of it. It's wonderful stories that in Genesis, if you'll review, you will see another look at how patient and loving and gracious our Father is. When the Ten Commandments were given, God also gave to Moses, through dictation it said, because Moses wrote down 613 mitzvot, or laws. Handwritten laws. Laws or instructions on how to keep the Ten Commandments, which were the law of God. The 613 mitzvot were moral and civil and religious. And they were to train the Israelites into becoming a people, a nation. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, the Israelites were allowed to cross the Jordan River. 
they crossed the river and each family was given a territory to which they claimed and set up in. They lived in those territories for 400 years under the rulership of the judges, the period of the judges we're all familiar with. During that time there were conflicts and there were battles, but the Israelites always conquered and the father was always walking closely and supervising and working with the prophets and the nation. At about around year 1000, 1000 years before Jesus, the Israelites said, we want a king. And the father then appointed Saul and anointed him to be king over the kingdom of Israel. Now we have a kingdom. We had a nation that was ruled by judges. But now we have the kingdom of Israel. And this kingdom of Israel is made up of 12 tribes. The kingdom of Israel, I'm going to repeat this because here's a lesson I want you to learn. The kingdom of Israel is made up of 12 tribes. From each tribe and territory comes a people whose name is identified with the leader, the patriarch of the tribe. If you were from the tribe of Dan, you lived in the territory of Dan, and you were a Danite. If you were from the tribe of Benjamin, you lived in the territory of Benjamin, and you were a Benjaminite. If you were from the tribe of Ephraim, you lived in the territory of Ephraim, and you became an Ephraimite. If you were from Judah, you became a Jew and lived in the territory of Judah. Now I'm going to repeat that. If you were from the tribe of Judah, you became a Jew and you lived in the territory of Judah. There is only one tribe which produces Jews and that is the tribe of Judah. An Ephraimite is not a Jew. A Danite is not a Jew. We have been taught in traditional Christianity that everything in the Old Testament was Jewish. That the covenants were Jewish. That the feast in Leviticus 23 were Jewish that the Passover is Jewish that the Sabbath is Jewish right here folks right here we have got to put an anchor down and say I will not move God until you show me if this is true or if this is not is everything of the Old Testament the Ten Commandments the Feast the Sabbath is it all Jewish I am going to show you by scripture that it is not Jewish, that it belongs to all of Israel, to the Danites, to the Benjaminites, to the Ephraimites, to the Issacharites, to the Nephthalites. It belongs to all the tribes. And if those tribes, if those tribes, which they were, were scattered throughout the world, when they come back into the knowledge of their Hebrew heritage, do those feast, do those promises, does the Old Testament belong to those tribes? Yes, it does. And we're going to research and discover that. So for now, we're going to just get into our thinking that everything in the Old Testament is not Jewish. It belongs to the Hebrews, to the people of Israel. So that when we look at Leviticus 23 and God commands us to keep his holy feast, he says these are my holy feast. He doesn't say these are the Jewish feast. They aren't the Jewish feast. They are God's holy feast. 